All right, uh, I scavenged a bunch of parts off the boards here. I got all of the uh, microprocessor parts off. I uh, got them off pretty cleanly. On one part, I broke one pin. Um, and um, so um, I, uh, there was enough there that I could solder a, a, another pin on top of it to, to, to do a repair. So I chose this part as a donor part because it had the same shaped leads as the other. It's a ceramic part also. This is just a 7474. And uh, so I, I took one of the legs off of this. And in taking, in taking the legs off, I don't know if you, can, if you can see this, it'll focus on it, but one of the pins was bent underneath. So this was a failure on the board. Uh, I don't know if it was actually making contact with its little nub or not. But yeah, it never made it into the board for a complete solder. So that's kind of interesting. It was not on a socket. It was soldered into the board, but yeah, it got folded underneath. So that was interesting. Anyway, I got that one repaired. So now I have a whole complement of parts for a little project if I want to do so. I have a bunch of uh, micas that I saved and uh, then a bunch of um, inductor things. Uh, these are just inductors, and these are kind of like little, uh, these are like transformer things. One's a center tap and one's not, so. Oh, I take it back. This one is, looks like a common mode choke. And this one looks, yeah, this one has the center tap on this side and not on this side. So I think this is a uh, uh, impedance transform. And then this one, again, is just a common mode choke. So these were probably, these were, well, these here were probably all used for, in filtering. And then there was a couple uh, ferrites that I saved. Now the interesting thing of uh, these guys is they all came with little, uh, little Teflon uh, spacers underneath. So you could, when you put them on the board, you put these little spacers on. Uh, so that was kind of, that was interesting. Um, so those were underneath all the parts. Um, I also took, took off the um, 10 megahertz oscillator and um, it's a 5 volt oscillator. I should mark that on here so I don't forget later. But you put your 5 volts here and ground in RF there. RF is I guess eh, 10, 10 megahertz I guess is RF. So I adjusted this last night for 10 megahertz and let's go ahead and uh, hook him back up let him warm up again and we'll see how far he has drifted. Um, yeah, so we'll just let that, uh, oh, that was off camera, wasn't it? Uh, we'll just let this, um, we'll let this sit here for a while and then we'll go uh, turn on a frequency counter. All right, well, um, it was um, at about 001 last night and now it's at 002. So um, that's not too bad. Um, probably if I let this thing like leave it on for 24 hours, adjust it, then wait 24 hours and measure it again, it's probably a better way to do it. But anyway, it seems pretty stable. And the, the temperature has been fluctuating quite a bit here. Um, so it's supposed to be, supposed to be 95 today. It was like 102 yesterday. So, <laughs> okay. Uh, one thing that I discovered here, let me show you. So a lot of this really, really old parts on this board and uh, a lot of them ceramic packages. So that one, 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 that one. Yeah. Uh, in fact, are they all ceramic? Oh, they are. Oh, no, one. There's one that's in a plastic package. Now, because they're all ceramic, it means that they're easy to pop the lids off. You just take a chisel and you pop the top of the lid off. So I took that part that I was using, that 7474, and put it under the microscope. So I uh, just popped the lid off and you can see the, uh, see the chip here. Yeah, let me zoom in, uh, go to a different magnification. And uh, the only markings on this part, I don't know who the manufacturer was. Uh, I didn't see any manufacturing marks, but right in the center of the die is a 7.4. <laughs> That's the only mark I saw inside this die. So, yeah, that was kind of fun. Anyway, there you go for the day.